expected. Uh, before closing our discussion on introduction to computer organization, I would like to introduce you to the concept of multi-core processors. Uh, but I should give you a caveat here. By default in this course, unless specified otherwise, you should always assume that we are talking about unicore uniprocessor machines. So what that means is the the CPU has no parallelism. It can only execute one process at a time. Okay, so that's the assumption we are going to work with. Now this assumption is simply for ease of understanding only for educational purposes. Uh, the concepts that we are discussing, they can easily be extended to uh, parallel computers or to multi core machines and so forth. Okay. Now, having said that, why are we talking about this multi core processors? The reason is all of you would know today, if you go out to buy a laptop or a desktop, it is almost impossible to find a laptop that has no parallelism that has only a single core and a single CPU. Okay. And that's why it is important that you know, you understand what a multi core processor means. So a multi core processor basically implies that on a single chip, we have integrated or fabricated multiple independent processors, CPUs. So for instance, if you have a dual core machine, so what that means is on a single chip, let's say this is your, your chip. You have two fully functional cores, which are basically fully functional CPUs that with, with all their caches, cache controllers and everything, they have been integrated on this single chip. So each of these uh, processors may have their own private caches. And then on the chip itself, let me expand this diagram a little bit. So on the chip itself, we may have a shared cache over here and both the processors would be accessing this, uh, uh, the shared cache. And then if you go off the chip, then you will have more RAM and so forth. Okay. So similarly, if you have a quad core processor, what that means is on a single chip, we have integrated four fully functional CPUs uh, along with their caches, ca cache controllers and everything. So essentially a multi-core processor allows for true parallelism. If you have, let's say a quad core processor, you can execute four processes simultaneously in parallel. <laughs> now recall that this is different from the illusion of concurrency that an operating system may provide you even if you had just a single core, a unicore uniprocessor machine. So this is true, true parallelism. The parallelism can not only be exploited by multiple processes. If you're, if a given single process itself is implemented as a multi-threaded process, or it is implemented in a parallel fashion using some parallel programming language, a single process also can execute on multiple cores simultaneously. But you should always remember that your program or your software must specifically be designed to take advantage of multiple cores. By default, if your program is a single threaded program, it can only run on a single core at any point in time. Okay. And in general, it is difficult or challenging to write parallel software. Uh, it's uh, it has a difficult uh, debugging and designing uh, requirements, which you will learn later on in the program. Now, finally, before moving on, I would like to quickly mention that a multi core design is faster than having multiple processors on separate chips. Okay. So for example, if you have a dual core, let's say a dual core architecture means on a single chip, you have these two cores. Let's say this is your, this is your core one. This is core two, right? So this is faster than having, let's say two processors on two separate chips and connected by external bus. Okay. This would be slower. Why is that? The main reason is first of all, when two cores are integrated on the same chip, <coughs> they are so closely related or they are so closely placed that the latency communication latency between them is, is extremely small. So because of this, they, the communication is faster. The other thing is typically on chip buses have a very high bandwidth because of that also communication is faster. Okay. So that's a quick summary or a quick introduction to uh, multi-core processors. I'm sure all of you would have heard about uh, Intel Core i3, i5 and so forth, right? These uh, um, various models uh, of um, uh, these are some popular CPUs that are available from Intel. There are others from uh, other companies like AMD and so forth. Uh, I'm, I'm taking this just as an example. Now, 
does anybody know what these numbers three five uh seven what these numbers mean these three five and seven so there is generation also but it's not in these numbers so for example if you have let's say core i7 10123 right so this 10 this is the generation this so in this example i'm just making this up similarly if you had let's say i9 uh let's say um 9456 uh, right so here this nine this is the generation these numbers these three five seven these actually indicate relative processing power so if you have let's say core i5 it does not mean that you have five cores inside the inside the processor right core i5 typically has only four cores as, as if i i i7 it it mean it won't typically have seven cores right so this is just indicating relative processing power similarly i3 doesn't have three cores uh, typically it will be a dual core machine okay so uh, by relative processing power basically what i mean is uh, in general uh, i5 is expected to be faster than i3 okay uh, now this faster is a subjective term here so for example uh, the uh, this relative processing power when it is computed it uh, accounts for many different factors like for example how many cores are there on the chip uh, how many what, what is the size of the caches is there support for multi threading hyper threading then it also includes things like uh, is there support for uh, turbo boost these kinds of special uh, performance optimizations and so forth right so uh, this is what it indicates it's not the number of cores